There's 22 lessons. Out of those 22 lessons, we'll have a test after the first, I'm going to say 10. First 10 lessons, we'll have a test, and then we'll go on from there. You should do two lessons a week. Study two lessons a week. I don't think that'll be too overwhelming. And then do the questions at the end of the chapter. And basically what we're going to do here is go over those questions, find the answers, and then delve a little more into some of the subjects that are talked about in those particular studies. So we'll start out with questions for chapter one. If you want to know what God is like, who should you look at? Jesus. Jesus. Why? He is the image of the living God. What else? He came to show us who God is the cause of God. He came to show us who God is, what his character is like. And okay. He's will. His will. Show us God's will. All right? He also says, I don't do anything. I don't see the Father do. I don't say anything I don't know the Father says. So he did what the Father told him to do, and he didn't do anything of his own. So when he healed people, we know it's God's will to heal. to heal people. Very good. All right, number two, and this is where a lot of people don't have an understanding about sickness. Who's the author of storms, floods, earthquakes, and all other catastrophes? Why? You can hear that question a lot. He's the God of this world, the Bible says. So one of the illustrations given in the reading was um, a person that said, well, God's in charge of the whole earth. But is that true? No. Satan is the God of this world. But we're of a different kingdom, right? So what do we have in this world in regard to counteracting what Satan is doing? Our authority. Because that's what Adam gave up was his authority. <laughs> I just f faded. Well, there we are. Okay. Can you hear me now? He just put new batteries in it, so the battery should be fine. Now, when it's talking about storms, floods, earthquakes, and other catastrophes, is it talking about rain? No. Snow, snow, just regular snow? No. What it's talking about, it's talking about catastrophic type events. So we could classify it as a... Who said hurricane? Yeah. A hurricane, a tornado, a earthquake. severe earthquake, Flood. severe flooding, mm -hmm. right? So can we pray about those things? Yeah. Sure. And I think we have an example later in the questions about uh, Jesus and what he did. All right, number three, when Satan is finally eliminated from the earth, what kinds of things won't exist anymore? The bad things, I like that. <laughs> All right. Th anything that hurts or destroys. Anything that hurts or destroys will be done away with. Hallelujah. Don't we all look forward to that day? We're just talking about a general. He was talking about how, uh, oh, what could my problem be here? Who knows what my problem could be? Is the antenna doing the right thing there? He did. He did change the battery. Well, I can't leave it lay there. <laughs> Maybe I can put it here. All righty. Where was I? Uh, anything, that hurts or anything that hurts or destroys. Number four. What two things make it impossible to accept the teaching that sickness and disease are from God? Well, we covered that a little bit already. 
Jesus' statement was what? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And his description of the Father is that God is love. So if I'm a parent and I'm raising my children, then to teach my child that the stove's hot, what am I going to do? I'm going to warn him the stove is hot. Am I going to take his hand over and put it on the stove? No, because I'd end up in jail <laughs> if I did that. All right. So God will not do bad things to us to teach us things. And we'll get into that a little bit further. Well, number five, what does the word chasten mean? To child train or educate in the Greek, it means to child train or educate. So turn your Bible uh, to the book of Job. So, Todd, I'd like you to read from Job. Michael, I'd like you to read from Psalms. And that'll cover what I want for this particular one. All right, in Job chapter 1, let's look at verses 1 through 5. What do we know about Job? Godly man. He was a godly man. Was he prosperous? Yes. He was very prosperous. He was the richest man around in that part of the country. All right. Job 1, 1 through 5. And I may stop you as you read. Okay. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. <clears throat> His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. That's a lot of possessions. That's a lot. So it took a lot of servants to take care of all that, didn't it? Certainly. So besides his children, he had a lot of servants. Okay. And his sons And sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job. So we already see from the beginning of Job that Job had some fears. Mm -hmm. What was his fear in this particular verse? That his children might sin. That his children were sinning. These parties they were having, they were getting over the top, and maybe there was some sinning going on at these parties. So he was praying for them. So that's a fear that he had. He didn't know that they were doing this. He didn't go to the parties. He didn't know, but he was afraid something was happening. All right, verses 6 through 10. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to, unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. So who was Job blessed by? God. God. Say God's the blesser. God is the blesser. <laughs> All right, now we're going to look in Psalms a little bit about this hedge. Said it was a hedge about him. Well, what do you think of when you think of a hedge about somebody? Protection. Hedge of protection. So there was a hedge of protection about Job. That's why he prospered in the way he did. Who's trying to keep you from prospering? Satan. Satan is. But God said in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you 
prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. All right. Psalm 34, 7. Mike, sorry, I should have told you earlier. Psalm 34, 7, and then we're going to go back to you again, Todd, on Job 10, 12. So, did we hear in the beginning that Job feared God? Yes. Now, we've done a study on that recently, and we've determined that word fear is not <laughs> afraid of God, but considering God awesome. That's what fearing God is. Considering God is awesome. And the Scripture proclaims He is awesome. So, if He's awesome in our life, we'll love Him and we'll serve Him. Amen? Amen. All right. It also goes on to say that an angel, well now, do we all have an angel? We know that from Scripture, don't we? That we all have a guardian angel. So that guardian angel helps provide that hedge of protection around us. Read that again, Mike. All right, so if we're considering God awesome, in our lives, then his angel is there, and his angel is there to protect us and to be encamped about us. I like that word, encamped about us. Makes home with us, right? He's not off doing something else. He's there to watch over us. All right, then back in, in uh, Mike, I'll give you Psalm, 50, Psalm 5, 12, sorry. All right, Job 10, 12 says, So he's saying that about God. So God gave Job what? Life and favor. What kind of life did Jesus say he came to give us? An abundant life. Not a life of lack. Not a life of suffering, sickness, and disease. But an abundant life. And that's what Job had. He was blessed in his children. He was blessed in his stuff. You know, some people have a problem with people having stuff. Well, God doesn't have a problem with people having stuff. He has a problem with stuff having people. <laughs> and we see that example of the rich young ruler. You know, when Jesus went to him and told him to do what with his stuff? Just, just get rid of it, right? But he couldn't do it. Why? Because stuff had him, right? So don't let stuff have you. Some people get upset about preachers with airplanes and uh, big office buildings and nice homes and, and all this. Well, if they're tools for ministry... What does it matter? Trump, what does Trump fly around in? His own private jet. Uh, Trump is running for president, and who's financing that? He is. I'm sure he's taking donations, but, you know, he's financed most of it himself because he can, right? So he's not moved by lobbying groups. He's not moved by special interests. He doesn't have people trying to bribe him with money because he's got more money than he'll ever need. Now, get that in your thinking is to be in a position of life that you had more money than you could ever spend. What could you do with money? Right? You could be a blessing to many people, couldn't you? All right, Psalm 512. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as a, is with a shield. Surround him as a shield. As a shield. So, God will bless the righteous, but the problem a lot of church has is coming to an understanding that they are righteous. Well, how do you become righteous? Through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ and through His shed blood. So it's not of your own works of righteousness, which you have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us, right? And you receive the free gift of righteousness. And it says those that receive the free gift of righteousness will reign in life as king. Well, how many of you know a king, nobody tells him what to do, <laughs> right? He makes his own decisions. So you don't have to be run around by the devil. And unfortunately, in many churches at one time, more glory was given to the devil than was given to God, right? Oh, the devil's been after me. Oh, the devil's this. Oh, the devil's that. Oh, the devil's this. Well, no, no. We're, he's under, he, where is he? Under my, feet. under my feet. So if he's in my face, he's out of his place, needs to get back under my feet. 
So I'm not talking about what he's trying to do. I'm talking about what God has given me the victory over in this life, over the world, over the flesh, and over the devil. Amen? Amen. Now read that again, Mike. All right, so if we're righteous, if we're in right standing with God, which we are through the blood of Jesus, well, what about if you sin? Well, what if you sin? 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So then we stand before Him without a sense of guilt, without a sense of inferiority, without a sense of condemnation. So if we're in right standing with God, which we are, then His favor surrounds us like a shield. Say, the favor of God surrounds me like a shield. So if I'm going for a job interview, what do I have going before me? The favor of God. If I'm going to a bank and discuss some kind of financial matter, what do I have going before me? Favor of God. If I'm answering a bill collector on the other end of the phone, <laughs> what do I have going before me? Favor of God. All right. And the favor of God brings blessings. The favor of God will have you in the right place at the right time every day doing the right thing. Say, the favor of God surrounds me like a shield. All right, Michael, Psalm 30, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And Todd, I'm going to get you to go to uh, John 10, 10. Psalm 30, verse 5. All right, so what that's saying, stuff might come. Opportunities might arise. We're not saying being a spirit-filled Christian is a life of freedom from opportunities to come. But it's just saying that we have the ability to overcome every opportunity that comes that's negative in any way, shape, or form. Amen? Now, what I like about this verse, it says His favor is for what? A lifetime. So if I'm fearing God, considering Him awesome in my life, I'm serving Him on a daily basis. I know I'm in right standing with Him. Then that favor will always be there. And it's with me for the rest of my life. Amen. 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 I, I'm not trying to obtain His favor every day. And, and see, some people get religious and they think, well, if I just read my Bible more. Well, if I just pray more. Well, if I just be more regular in church, then God would bless me more. What's that doing? That's getting all back into works again. It's not by works. It's the free gift of righteousness, right? And that righteousness brings His favor, which is just awesome. All right, John 10, 10. The thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. All right, so who's the thief? Satan. Satan's a thief, the devil. And he's coming to steal, kill, and destroy, All right? That sounds like hurricanes, earthquakes, and tornadoes. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Read the rest of it. All right, so Jesus came that we could have life. life and have it more abundantly. So is healing part of an abundant life? Yes. What's sickness part of? Killing, stealing, and destroying. Satan's job description. It's part of the curse. But where's Satan? Under, Under our feet. feet. Where should sickness and disease be? Under, Under our feet. All right, so we're going to get a revelation of that through the study of how God's will is healing for us now. Some people believe, well, when we all get to heaven, it's all going to be all right. Well, yeah, it's going to be awesome when we get to heaven, right? But we got to live now on this earth. And even our natural bodies are made to heal. If I cut my finger, it's going to heal, right? Uh, my bodies, every cell in my body, every seven years is renewing itself, which is just an awesome thing to think about, that every seven years we're like a new person. That's why if you've had any kind of uh, cancer then after seven years, they, they'll consider you're cured, even though they won't use that word. But they'll consider it's not coming back again because your body's renewed itself. Now, what happens because of the sin nature of man that's in our physical body is we begin to age. And then those processes begin to break down. But God said he would satisfy us with long, long life. And what kind of life? A long, miserable life? No. A long, healthy, abundant living life. 
Amen? You know, when we did this study before, and I might bring you some of those statistics of some people that have lived over 100 years and still bowl, still drive their car, still live by themselves, over 100 years old. Well, I call that abundant living. Amen? Still have their eyesight like they should have. Still have, you know, their systems working the way they should, over 100 years old. One, one book I read that was by a medical doctor said that the physical body, as you study it, is made to live 120 years, and he wasn't even a Christian. And he had found through the study of the body that it's, it's made. But what causes the body to break down and be destroyed, number one, is stress. Because that weakens everything. Weakens your immune system, weakens you emotionally, just weakens you, stress will. All right? So that's why God said to do what with your cares? Roll them over on Him. Cast them over on the Lord. 95% of the things you worry about, you can't do anything about anyway. <laughs> so why worry about it, right? All right, then uh, Michael, 1 Peter 5.8. 1 Peter 5.8. That thunder is the barbells next door. <laughs> mm -hmm. So who's your adversary? The devil. The devil. All right. Walks about like a roaring lion, lion seeking whom he may devour. All right. So he's not a roaring lion, right? No. He walks about as a roaring lion. And as David Engels, one song he sings, talks about Satan having his teeth knocked out, all right? And he can only gum people. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I've shared about Tammy Baker's story about running to the roar of where the old lions were the ones that roared, and they were over here, and the young lions were over here. So when the prey would run from the, from the roar, they'd run right into the jaws of the young lions. But when the prey would run to the roar... Guess what? Old mangy lion's laying there. He can't do nothing. <laughs> Teeth have fallen out. Got arthritis. You know, he can't do anything. So they could just trample him and run over him. So her book was called Run to the Roar. And we as Christians need to remember that. You know, Satan might get loud sometimes, but you got to remember that he is what? Toothless He's a toothless wonder. He's defeated. Jesus defeated him, and he gave you authority over him. The Bible says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Not the devil chasing you around, you chasing the devil off. Amen. That's good work. All right, number six. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, what did Paul tell us his thorn in the flesh was? All right, let's go ahead and read that. 2 Corinthians 12, 7. Now, what does society and a lot of the religious community think the thorn in the flesh was? A physical ailment, a sickness, some kind of disease. Excuse me. The man that wrote three-fourths of the New Testament would not have had a sickness and a disease. He's given us so much revelation by the Spirit of how it is God's will that everybody be healed, right? Why would he be sick? Well, that was his thorn in the flesh. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Second Corinthians twelve seven, Mike. Twelve seven. Mm -hmm. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh is given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Now, several things to notice in this verse. Read the first phrase. Unless I should be exalted above measure. All right. So, unless I should be exalted above measure. Due to the abundance of, abundance of revelation. So if you're going to have a thorn in the flesh, you must be somebody really spiritual. You must be up there with the Apostle Paul. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not anywhere close to that <laughs> as far as the revelations that he got, right? So when somebody says, well, I've just got my thorn in the flesh like the Apostle Paul, they're actually bragging on themselves saying they're really spiritual. But I found most of those people aren't really spiritual. Because they wouldn't, if they were spiritual, they wouldn't think that in the first place. All right, it says, it was a messenger of Satan. Satan. 
All right. So it's a demon, some kind of demon that's been assigned to Paul, right? And it says it was sent to him to do what? To buffet him. Now that word buffet, if you've ever lived near the ocean, where the tide's coming in to the pier, and those waves come in and they just smack against the pier, and they just smack against the pier, and they just smack against the pier, that's buffeting. Just coming after you, coming after you, coming after you, just beating on you all the time. All right? Now we're going to see from these scriptures, turn to the book of Acts, a modern day expression for a thorn in the flesh would be a pain in the neck. Now, how many have ever had an association that was a pain in the neck <laughs> to you that constantly buffeted you? All right. Acts 13 45. Acts 13 45. Angie, you got it? Okay. All right, read that loud, Paul. When the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. So Paul had a group of people called the Judaizers that followed him around that contradicted everything he said. I've had a few people in my lifetime that could fit that classification. And every city he went into, Angie, read verse 50. Every city he went into, there was this group of people that would follow after him. Sometimes they showed up when he was there. Sometimes they didn't show up till after he left. But the Jews showed up the devout women of high rank and outstanding men of the town and illustrated persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drew them out of their boundaries. Now Jesus said that we would follow after him and by following after him we would receive persecution in this life mm -hmm. you don't have to believe for it it just comes mm -hmm. all right so everywhere paul went he was persecuted for the gospel's sake now the reason some churches don't experience persecution is because they're not preaching the gospel mm -hmm. they might be preaching a watered down version of the gospel mm -hmm. all right now i believe this year will be a year of persecution for the church in america uh, my wife was watching an afternoon show today, and they had a woman on there that proclaimed she could heal people, and they were tearing her apart. They were just tearing her up on that show. And from what my wife heard on her side, she sounded authentic. She sounded like a born-again believer that had a ministry of healing, right? So you're going to see more of that in the public view of them the world system trying to discredit Christianity, discredit healings, discredit any kind of miracles that might take place. You can see it, all right? And Pastor, um, when, when we take on Paul's example where he's saying that it's a message of Satan sent to buffet him. Yes. It's not something that he did to get that. No. And well, then, what he did was receive the abundance of revelations he did. Yeah, but no, he didn't sin to cause this to happen. No. That's my point. Exactly. And some people think that when you go through some stuff, it's because you, it's, uh, they, 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 they said you, you, it's something that you saw like you redeemed. Yes. You know? And yes. That's not always, that's not always the experience. No, it's not. Sometimes you get targeted just because you're doing something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Something good. Mm -hmm. As one preacher said, if the devil's not causing you problems, I wonder if you're doing anything. <laughs> 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 but thank God for the victory. Amen. Amen. All right, go to Acts chapter 14, verse 5 and 6. Michael? And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of uh, Lacedaemonia, into the surrounding region. All right, so here again, persecution, verse 19 and 20. And they were actually going to stone them in that particular place. Yeah, same chapter. Then the Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. 
dead. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city. And the next day he departed as Barnabas to Derbe. Now, I believe he was dead. I believe they stoned him to death. And I believe when the disciples gathered around him, they had a prayer meeting. And they raised him back up. Amen? All right. 2 Timothy 3.11. Todd, you look that up for us. And Michael, you look up 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 27. 2 Timothy 3.11. So does he say anything about sickness or disease? No. This thorn in the flesh was persecution brought on by the Judaizers that followed him from city to city to city, refudiating the things he talked about. Can you go online and find people that say Kenneth Hagin was a false prophet? Kenneth Copeland was a false prophet. Creflo Dollar is a false prophet. Yeah. You can go online. Any, any word of faith type preachers that are out there. I, I found an article one time that said Billy Graham was Antichrist. Well, do you believe Billy Graham's the Antichrist? No, we don't believe that, do we? All right, so anybody that's preaching the gospel is going to go through some kind of persecution, and especially from the world right now that's wanting to shut down anything that's Christian, right? All right. Michael. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak to them full, I am more. And labor is more abundant. In stripes above measure. times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of Gentiles, in perils of the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among the false brethren, weariness and toil and sleeplessness often and hunger and thirst and fasting often and cold and nakedness besides the other the other things what comes upon me daily my deep concern for all the churches who is weak and I'm not weak who is made to stumble and I do not burn with indignation did he go through some stuff <laughs> does your life compare at all to that when you want to have a boo-hoo pity party, just read that verse, would you? Those few verses. That was the Apostle Paul. And he admits he was, he was killed one time, right? Talked about being stoned, but he talked about dying. And I believe it was that incident we read before where they dragged him out of the city thinking he was dead, and, and then he was raised back up. That's awesome, isn't it? All right, number seven. For whose benefit was Deuteronomy 7, 13 through 15 written? Our benefit. Our benefit. Believers. are written for believers. What do the Greek and Hebrew words translated salvation imply? Now, if, if I was to walk up to somebody on the street that I, I knew was a Christian, and I would ask them, what does it mean to you to be saved? What do you think they would say? Saved from hell, going to heaven. But that word means more than that, doesn't it? What does it mean? It means deliverance. From what? From the power of the enemy. From the power of the enemy. From anything. From the enemy I'm delivered from. Am I delivered from sickness and disease? Yes. Am I delivered from poverty and lack? Yes. Am I delivered from marital problems? Yes. Am I delivered from child problems? Yes. Right? Am I delivered from financial issues? Yes. Yeah, I'm delivered. What's another word? Safety. Safety. We've already talked a little bit about that. The favor of God surrounds us like a shield. We have an angel, guardian angel that's with us, right? Mm -hmm. So we can dwell in safety. We've encouraged you to memorize Psalm, Psalm 91. What does it start out by saying in Psalm 91? My God in Him I will trust, right? So He is my, he is my safety, isn't He? Yeah. God is my safety. 
Though a thousand fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, it will not come near me. I want you to get that in you, right? If you just happen one day to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, understand God's word will still work for you. And all hell might start breaking loose around you, but you stand on Psalm 91. Amen? Because it'll work. All right, what's another one? What's that mean? <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. That's like when you open up the dictionary and it says it means to, to do that. Yeah, right. What does that mean? Preservation in your life. What does it mean? Preservation. Keep together. Keep you together. Preserve. preserve you. Keep you what? Alive. alive. Keep you alive. Preserve you. Keep you. Alive. Keeping you from falling apart. Keep you from falling apart. We need that, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. You can get to the point sometimes you feel like you are going to fall apart. All right, what's another word? Healing, healing and health. 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 Now, how, how, what, what would you rather have, healing or health? health? Health. I'd rather have health where I don't need healing, right? But I have both. So that word salvation means deliverance, safety, preservation, healing, and health. So when I say I'm saved, then I have all those things that's part of my salvation. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus said, I've come that you can have life. life and life more abundantly. All right. How did the children of Israel take themselves out from under the protection of their covenant? By wrongdoing, by rebellion, by complaining and murmuring, disobedience of the law. All right. So how do we bring ourselves out from under the protection of the covenant? Same way. Right? Same way. Not trusting God. Not staying out of sin. What will sin do to you? It'll get you off the path. Yeah. What happens if you're off the path? You're not in the presence of God. You're not in the presence of God. And as the one young man shared with us Sunday morning, when you get out of the glory, yeah. I love that. When you get out of the glory, you're what? Yeah. You're, on, yeah. <laughs> you're available. Yeah. You're a target. Right? You're a target. How do we know that it's God's will that we be healed? Because healing is provided for us under the new covenant. Under the new covenant. And I could get healed in the old covenant. Yep. Yeah. So if we got a new and better covenant, and they could get healed in the old covenant, mm -hmm. then we can get healed now. Yep. Amen. 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 Who got them all right? It's about my third time around, so I got them all right. Okay. <laughs> Chapter 2. See how we're doing here. All right. Why can't we always guarantee that God is going to move spectacularly through the gifts of the Spirit? All right. Turn to 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. God. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing. All right, the what now? The gifts. plural gifts of healings. Healings, healings right? Gifts of healings. So there must be more and more. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. To another, the working of miracles. <laughs> to another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So what's the difference between us and Jesus in regard to the gifts? Jesus had all the gifts. Jesus had all the gifts without measure. measure. What do we have? Some. We have so many gifts. We have limits. And we have as the body all of them available. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But not all of us are going to operate in all of them. Right? But it says, desire the best gifts. 
Now, we know that we need to walk in love. We've got to love God and love people, right? But in regard to the gifts of the Spirit, will the Holy Spirit force a gift on you? No. So we have to desire spiritual gifts. Now, for people to be healed, it takes gifts of healings as the Spirit wills. So if an individual is sick, say an individual went to the doctor today, they found out they have Hukamanga 6. It's really bad. Stage 6. And they found out through whatever media they're connected with that Kenneth Copeland is going to be in Washington, D.C. two weeks from now. So they think, well, I'll go to Washington, D.C. in two weeks, and I'll have Kenneth Copeland lay hands on me. Now, what are they expecting? Healing. They're expecting healing. How are they expecting it to come in that meeting? Through laying on the hands through Brother Copeland or through gifts of healings, right? Now, if we study back in the, in the healing revival, and I encourage you to, to go on the internet and study some of those men back in that day, or Roberts being one of them, Brother Hagen, when, when they had meetings, then they operated in certain kinds of healings. Uh, one was known for healing deaf people. Bam, 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 bam. Deaf people got healed. Uh, I think that was T.O. Osborne. Uh, one was noted for blind people being healed. Bam, 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 bam. Blind people got healed. Others, it was people getting out of wheelchairs. They had some kind of physical problem. They were in a wheelchair. But they didn't all operate in all of it. Now, Oral Roberts would lay hands on everybody. And one time he had a woman that came to him that had a son that had a genetic problem when he was born. And believe it or not, Oral Roberts looked at her and said, I don't have faith for his healing. She said, well, I do. You just lay hands on him. <laughs> so the way the story goes, and I read it in one of his books, the way the story goes, he went, he, he did what, you know, he did. And, and they went back to their seat and they dismissed the meeting and he went home and he came back the next day. And as they were pulling into the fairgrounds where they had the big tent set up, there's all this commotion going on in the tent. So he tells one of his men, well, you go in there and see what's going on, right? What's all this commotion about? So they go in, and obviously the little boy couldn't walk was part of his problem. So the little boy's up running back and forth across the front of the stage, and everybody's going crazy because back in that day, everybody went to every service, you know. There wasn't anything else to do, so they went to church. So he's running back across. So they came back in. They told Oral, said, you know that little boy that the mother wanted you to pray for that you said you didn't have the faith for him to be healed? He's in there running back and forth across the platform. Ooh. Hallelujah. So that mother had some faith. Right? She had some faith. And your faith will always work for you. And if you're a parent, it'll work for your children too. Amen. But I thought that was an exciting story. All righty. Did we finish that? Go ahead. Part of the list. All right. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Hallelujah. So all together collectively, we have all that available to us. And that's why I encourage people that are part of a local church, don't miss church. Yeah. Don't miss church because you don't know what God might want you to do on a particular Sunday. Who he might want you to pray for and minister to. Amen. Amen. All right. Number two. What do we need to keep in mind when the gifts of the Spirit are not in manifestation? God's Word, always works. God's Word will always work and people can be healed through okay. their faith. All right, turn to Matthew 8, 5 through 13. This is all in Matthew 8 and 9, so we can all follow along here. Matthew 8, 5 through 13. Nathaniel? Yes, sir. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. So what was God's will? To heal. Because Jesus said, I will come heal him. So God's will was to heal this servant. Go ahead. Thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my 
servant shall be yours. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said unto them that followed, Verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith. No, not in Israel. I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So whose faith got the servant healed? The centurion's faith. And what did he say to Jesus? Come to my house and lay hands on him? What did he say? Say the word only. So let me challenge you with this. When a symptom attacks your body, what you say at that moment greatly determines your outcome. What you say at that moment greatly determines your outcome. Amen? You are the prophet of your own life. You're the prophet of your own life. I like that. Matthew 9, 20, and 20, 20 through 22. Matthew 9, 20 through 22. Todd? And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. What did she say? If I, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. And when she did touch his garment, what happened? She got well. She got well. So she had what she said. said. Very good. Matthew 9, 27 through 29. Michael? When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men, blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? And he said to them, Yes, Lord. And then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened. So whose faith got the blind men healed? Their faith. Say, my faith will work for me. Now, when you look at these examples in the Old Testament, what kind of individuals are we looking at? Ordinary people, not born again, not filled with the Spirit, don't have any revelation of the Word other than what they see before them, which is Jesus says with the woman with the issue of blood in another passage that when she heard about Jesus, well, what did she hear? He's healing everybody. So the main issue in the church today is what is God's will concerning healing? Will he heal me? And that was a question the blind men had, didn't they? Right? But what did he say to them? Your faith has made you well. Now, they knew he had the ability, and the church today would not argue with the fact that God has the ability to heal anybody. But the deception in the church today as a whole is that what is his will? Is his will to heal everybody. So if I'm not confident that his will is to heal me, I might as well stay in the seat. Don't go up in the healing line. Right? I've got to have a confidence that it's His will that I be well. How am I going to have long life if I suffer some kind of sickness or disease that takes me out? That's not a long life. I don't know about you, but I refuse. I refuse to die of sickness and disease. 
I made a quality decision in my life. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what the report says. I don't want to care what the XYZ says. I refuse to die of sickness and disease. Because Jesus took care of that for me. Amen. 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 All right, chapter 9, verse 35. Michael? So Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages. How many of them? All. Everybody say all. all. What's all mean? All. If you're from the south, it means there ain't no more. It's all. <laughs> Go ahead, Michael. Teaching in their synagogues. What was he teaching? The Word of God. The Word of God. He was teaching the will of God. This, this is God's will, right? Healing what? Every sickness. Every sickness and every. every disease among the people. He didn't go down the healing line and go healed, healed, healed. No, not you. Healed, healed. No, hold it. No, healed, no. He healed them except in one place. Where was that? His hometown. Hometown. Hometown crowd said, oh, we know him. He made my kitchen table and chairs. Had that little shop down the street. I remember him. Right? And he could there do no mighty work because of their unbelief. Mm. Unbelief. Whew. All righty, we're done with that. Number three. When the gifts of the Spirit are not in manifestation, how can healing and miracles occur? Through the preaching of the Word. By just what Michael read. By teaching and preaching the Word of God and teaching people to exercise their faith. own faith for healing. Now, I'm on this side of that argument in that I believe a born-again, spirit-filled Christian must use their faith to get their healing. Now, I know born-again, spirit-filled people that have run all over the country trying to get healed by other people, and it didn't happen for them. And I believe that's because unto whom much is given. Much is required. And I believe the number one way for you to get your healing, those of you sitting in this room tonight, anybody listening over the internet, if anybody is, <laughs> then I believe your way to get your healing is through your faith. Now, I'm excited when ministers come and they pray for people, and sometimes people get it that way, right? But I believe the number one way is for you to believe God for yourself because your faith will always work for you. And you don't have to wait till Brother Doodad comes to town. To lay hands on you. You don't have to go to the town brother doodads in to get prayed for. You can believe God yourself. Amen. 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 Feel strong about that. Where are we? Four? Four. People who need healing don't have to wait for a manifestation of the Spirit to be healed. Why? Because the Word will always work for them. Mark eleven twenty two through 24. Let's turn there. Mark eleven twenty two through 24. I'm a good Ramus student. Raymond graduate, heard a lot about Mark eleven twenty two through 24. Who's got it? Todd? And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Turn to your neighbor and say, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. <laughs> For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say. Say, I'm a whosoever. I'm a whosoever. Shall say unto this mountain. Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Amen. Now I will encourage you, when you get around other people, people at work, uh, people you meet with out in society, um, listen to how they talk. And you'll find most of them are getting what they're saying. Mm -hmm. If they're talking fear, then a lot of things are happening in their life that fear has opened the door to. Yeah. But if they're talking faith, they're talking positive, they're talking what God can do, you'll see that those people are living the abundant life. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. There's two reasons we know that it's God's will to heal. It's in God's redemptive plan. Okay. 
God's will. But how do we know? Where does sickness and disease come from? And God does not want us to have anything that comes from Satan. John 10, 10, the thief comes to kill, kill, steal, and destroy. I've come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Psalm 103, 3, go ahead and turn there. Psalm 103, 3 talks about the redemptive plan that God gave in the Old Testament. What does that tell us? Psalm 103, 3. Nathaniel. How many? All. All. And that's called redemption. redemption. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. so. I'm, redeemed. I'm redeemed. Don't you do that so thing. Like that. <laughs> that just, that just, mm, that gets on my last nerve when people do that. All right. I know you were just kidding. Number six, what will happen once our minds are renewed with the word of God? So what's the majority of the issue that people have? Their minds aren't renewed. How can you tell whether their mind's renewed? Listen to what they're saying. Listen to what they do in a crisis. Right? And if you're listening to that, you can locate them pretty quick. Just the way they are. <laughs> we were, again, talking with a gentleman today, and we were talking about this one person and, and uh, how we had heard that that person was a Christian and we've never met them. And, and this fellow never met them either, he said. But he knew somebody that knew them and said they used the GD word. I said, well, if they're using the GD word, they're not a Christian. Right? right. They're not a Christian if they're, if they're using God's name in vain. No. And this person said, well, I don't want to judge them. I said, well, we're not judging. We're fruit inspecting. Okay. <laughs> because the Bible says by the, your fruits... You'll know them. So if somebody is using God's name in vain, that's, that's rotten fruit, right? Rotten fruit. Yeah, that's not godly fruit. That, that's bad. All right. Where are we? Seven? In Luke 13, 11 through 16, Jesus gave two reasons why the woman with the spirit of infirmity should be loosed. What are those two reasons? Because Jesus always paid the price? No. Satan had bound her. That's one. She's a daughter of Abraham. Go to Galatians 3. You got part of it. Half a point. <laughs> Galatians 3, 13 and 14. What's that tell us? Amen. Nathaniel, look like you got it. <laughs> and 14. Christ what? What tense is that? So I am... Redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Not going to be. I am redeemed. The price has been paid for my redemption. Right. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. So what was the curse of the law in regard to what we're talking about? Sickness. Sickness and disease. That's part of the curse. He said, if you don't do this, if you don't obey me, you don't walk in my commandments, the curse is going to come on you. Now, is that because he put them on them? No, what did they do? They stepped out, out. Out, the out from under the umbrella mm -hmm. through disobedience and rebellion, and then that stuff came on them. Mm -hmm. All right? Why does bad stuff happen to good people? They step over sometimes, right? Because they are redeemed. Sam redeemed. redeemed. All right, go ahead. So what was the blessing of Abraham? Part of it. Health. Health. Health and wealth. Bless going out. Bless coming in. Everything in your house is blessed. Servants are blessed. Livestock's blessed. All right. We could, we could apply that today to, um, we don't have, a lot of us don't have livestock. and We don't have grains and stuff like that. Uh, but if people invest in the stock market, then their stock could be blessed. Right. They could know, have wisdom on what to buy, what not to buy, when to sell, when not to sell, you know, those kind of things. Uh, could be blessed in your savings account. You know, it talks about your storehouses. If you don't have a savings account, you ought to open a savings account. 
I don't care if you don't put but a dollar a week in it. That's a storehouse. And God will increase you in those areas. Amen? Amen. All right, Galatians uh, 3, 26 through 29. Todd? For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ's, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Woo! So are the blessings of Abraham ours? Yes. yes. That's what the Word says, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So you need to go back sometime, read your blessings that you've got. All right, number eight. What does God call sickness and disease? Satanic oppression. Satanic oppression. James 5, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Number nine. Why do we know sickness and disease are not God's ways of teaching us? It'd be cruel, and God is not cruel. All right, John four twenty four says God is. Well, He is love, but it doesn't say that. <laughs> God is spirit. God is a spirit. All right, John four twenty four. All right, turn to John fourteen twenty six. John fourteen twenty six. 1426. Todd? But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So as I'm standing up here tonight and I'm teaching the Word to you, who is actually teaching you? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in me, right? And then the Holy Spirit in you is bringing revelation. To you in these different areas. Amen? Amen. All right. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 13. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 13. Just to show you about persecution, this week Donald Trump was speaking at Liberty University in Lynchburg. And he used the reference to Corinthians such and such. And they just jumped all over him because he didn't say 2 Corinthians. He said 2 Corinthians. So this is the kind of thing I'm talking about that the world is going to pick any little thing they can pick at to come against Christianity. Well, I know some people I know that say 2 Corinthians or 2 Timothy or something like that. You know, it's not always 1st, 2nd, whatever. That's what we say in Greek. Yeah. Okay. And we know Donald Trump is not... The Apostle Paul, <laughs> right? Okay, but I, I couldn't believe they jumped on him for that. All right, First Corinthians two nine through thirteen, Michael. Yes, sir. But it is, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Now people take that verse out of context and quote that all the time. As an excuse for being stupid. Yep. Right? Okay. Well, eye has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of man to think. Well, that's what it says, but go on and read the rest of it. And God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So who's revealed them to us? God. By his spirit. So we can know the mind of God, can't we? We can know the will of God. We can know the character of God. That's right. Amen. Through the Spirit. Michael? For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of God except the Spirit of the man which is in him? So our communication with God is with our spirit, spirit man, not with our head. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So we have within us the wisdom of God. The knowledge of God, understanding and all things. We have it within us. So we got to learn how to tap into that, right? We have healing in us. 
Right? The healer lives in us. Right? If the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, He will quicken and make alive your mortal body. So we got the generator on the inside here that can generate health and healing to us. Right? Michael? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Freely. Freely given to us. Do you have to work for it? No, nope, it's freely given to us. All right? So the natural man doesn't understand the virgin birth. The natural man doesn't understand Jesus rising from the dead. The natural man doesn't understand how the supernatural coming into contact with the natural can heal a person. He just doesn't understand that. That just doesn't make any sense to his natural mind that he has. So that's why it's important for us to take the Word of God and to renew our mind with the Word. So we don't have opposition in our thinking to things God wants us to do. Amen? Amen. You know, we're, we know snow's coming up uh, in the next couple of days. We're going to have a uh, significant amount of snow, it sounds like. So if we have to travel during that time, we need to be tuned in to the Spirit of God in our travels. In knowing which way to go. And if we get an impression, don't go home this way. Go home this way. And our natural mind wants to reason that out and say, but that's longer. Or there's a big hill going home that way, right? And to reason that away and continue on the path we're going, we might get in trouble. Exactly. Amen? Because I believe God tries to prevent accidents. And we've, you know, I've shared illustrations of people in this, in this church. One lady was uh, pulling over one night to get gas. She gets out of the car to get gas. And immediately she gets this impression, get in and move your car up. Well, it looked like the car was fine where it was. But she listened. Everybody say, listen. <laughs> God's trying to help you. Listen. So she got in the car, which seemed stupid to her, pulled it up to the next pump. Right? She was like at this first pump. Pulled up to the next pump, was getting ready to get out. A car came through the parking lot and ran into the first pump she was at. Say, right place, right time. Right? Place, right, time. right? Yeah. Now, if she'd ignored that leading, right, she would have started pumping gas, possibly gotten run into, possibly been in the midst of an explosion. Right? But fortunately, the car wasn't going fast enough that it hurt the gas pump. But it could have hurt her if she had been there. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So when you get a leading like that, and, and it'll be a strong enough impression you know, well, I ought to think about this. Not just some whatever, right? But I ought to think about this, okay? And it can, it can involve simple things in life too, not yeah. things that are necessarily, um, you know, my confession, I'm in the right place at the right time every day doing the right thing. So the other day they had the fundraiser for the boy that died, uh, Domino's, where they were given a percentage of the pizzas to uh, his family for burial expenses and stuff. You know, we don't think about that sometimes with young people, but when young people die, there's no, there's no insurance. There's no life insurance. There's no burial insurance. There's, there's no way to take care of that, and it's a major expense on families when that, when that happens. So my wife reminded me, go buy and get a pizza while you're out. So I was going to the grocery store to get a couple things. So when I got through in the grocery store, I went over and ordered the pizza. Well, you know, it's going to take some time, and they're busy. I mean, they're just swamped because it's this fundraiser. So I thought, well, I'll just walk down to the, to the pawn shop and look around a little bit. So I walk down to the pawn shop. I'm looking around. I'm looking at guns, <laughs> one thing I was looking at, uh, looking at other things. And all of a sudden, I'm just like done. Now, there's more stuff to look at, but, but I'm done. I thought, okay, I'm done. Not like, thus saith the Lord, you're done. <laughs> But I just knew I was done, 
right? So I go walking back to, to the pizza place. In my mind, thinking it's not ready. You know, they're really busy. It's, it's not going to be ready yet. So I picked up a, a free magazine on the way. And I was going to sit there in the lobby and read this magazine until my pizza was ready. Walk in, sit down in the chair. The man says, what's your name? I said, Don Meadows. Yours just came out. Yours just came out. Right place, right time. And God will do that in your life all the time. You know, it's just amazing how God will do that in your life. And, and I trust him to do that. Have me in the right place at the right time every day doing the right thing. And I'm going to write a book one day on it because it's, it's just an awesome revelation. All right, where are we? Number 10. Number 10. Here we are. According to John 10, 10, why did Jesus come? All right, who's got an Amplified? I do. You got an Amplified? All right, read it and Amplify it, Angie. We'll prefer Angie on this. <laughs> she likes to highlight. Are you getting anything out of this? Do you like those first two lessons? Oh, my goodness. Have and enjoy life. Is being sick and down and in bed enjoying life? No. New. No. No. Okay. And have it in abundance to the full, filled, overfilling of life. Fill it till it overflows. Amen. That's full, isn't it? That's yeah. Fill it till it overflows. You know, they got a new. Uh, Burger King has updated over here, and they've got a new fountain. And it's one of those you can select the drinks at the top, and it's got all kinds of drinks that you can pick. Well, you you know you pick your drink category, and then it takes you to a, another selection. Then you pick that selection, then it takes you to the main one, and then you hit the main one, and it says push this button, and it'll pour it out. Well, inevitably, when you're pushing that button, it's really coming out. And depending on how much ice you got in that cup, depends on whether you're going to get a cup full or it's going to overflow and more than not it overflows because it's coming so fast so i just like to believe the blessings of god are coming into our lives so fast that it just runs over hallelujah amen all right let's stand together you're blessed hallelujah i want to give you a handout jeff this is an additional teaching on the double cure it's by brother hagan I had it in my records from the last time I taught it. So give everyone a copy of that. And just read that over when you have a chance. It'll bless you. Paul, would you just miss us? Sure. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word and the work, the abundance that you have provided for us in your word. We just rejoice, Lord. We just give you thanks. With a full heart, Lord, for all you've done for us and for just opening your word to us this evening. Thank you. We just give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, watch the roads. It might be a little slick out there. <laughs> Hello. And we'll let you know about Sunday. What